Energy things to think about this week uh, as we look out on the horizon. It's hard to come out of the weekend without Donald Trump once again ringing in your ears. As apparently over the course of the last few days while you were off at the beach, he was ringing the King of Saudi Arabia asking, or if not demanding, more oil onto the market. And not just a few barrels, but up to two million barrels of oil from Saudi Arabia, which represents actually their total capacity, their total idle capacity. And if they were to deliver that, as requested by President Trump. It would essentially leave Saudi Arabia, the world's largest oil producer and exporter, with no more idle capacity left. What do you think that will do to oil prices? I'm afraid, President Trump, it won't have the desired effect you're looking for, i.e. it won't lower prices. It will actually do the exact opposite. It will start to push oil prices even higher because it will leave the world with essentially no more spare capacity. So anything that would happen in the world to disrupt supply from any other country, which we've seen happen quite often, if the world has no idle supply, there's only one direction for oil prices to go, and that's quite high, because there's no insurance, there's no contingency left, because the all idle capacity has been used. So on this occasion, I think wiser minds will have to prevail. A, the market doesn't need two million barrels of oil a day, and the, bar, the world does need to run on the knowledge that there is some idle supply somewhere so that the just-in-case scenario, we've got something left in the tank, some security to come to the rescue if indeed supply is disrupted elsewhere. So on this occasion, I would expect for the OPEC and for Saudi Arabia, obviously to pump more, to give the American President Trump a few more barrels, but nothing near the volume that he needs. That's certainly worth thinking about over the coming days as oil markets get back to work on Monday morning.